Now I've come up here today to Swarland in the heart of Northumberland for the Swarland and Newton on the Moor classic car and village show. And now I'm just going to in the car park at the minute, I'm just going to head down into the show field, and see what cars are here and see what else is going on. And we're starting with this lovely Nissan Figaro Penelope the Beetle from Millie's American Diner. And then this amazing Austin Princess, I think it's a limousine. I'm not quite sure on that one, but I believe it's the Austin Princess limousine. Standing next to that or sitting next to that is a lovely uh, Volkswagen Golf convertible. And then this glorious Morgan parked next to a lovely little Lancia. I think it's a Lancia Fulvia. What a wonderful car that is. Certainly don't see many of those. And then, of course, next to that, lovely little pale blue MG convertible. And then while you're looking at this selection of Jaguars and Aston Martins that are parked up, over here today at, uh, at the Swollen Car Show, there's a lot of music going around in the background, live music. There's also some announcements going off with the, over the speakers, which is playing havoc with the... Uh, with a voice control that you're going to hear. So this is a little bit of a voiceover just to cover some of the fact when the music's playing. I believe later on they're going to take a break and put a brass band on. So in between the break and the brass band playing, I might be able to get some uh, some actual live footage. But unfortunately, at the moment, this has to be a, uh, a voiceover. Look at that lovely Bentley. What, what a wonderful car. Some people are here with gorgeous little dogs. <laughs> oh, great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course there's this marvellous little Ford 100E. What a lovely, a lovely condition that's in. It looks to be truly all original. Possibly the exception of the rear wheels which look as though they're banded. But what a lovely car that is. And of course coming up to the next row is a lovely Jaguar. I do like the look at that cylinder. Absolutely gorgeous. Another local car, Colin Ford Escort Estate there. And uh, there's Vaughan's Mark III Cortina GT. Stevens Mark III Cortina GXL and uh, Adams Mark III Ford Escort a lovely Mercedes SL and then look at this this is so artistic the way it's been designed originally what a wonderful car that is and then went into uh, the Volvo 440 obviously a fairly recent Jaguar and what you, you can't have a country show without a Land Rover and there's two of them here and in the middle of that a more modern Chevy Camaro absolutely fantastic great to see all these cars out here moving on then this is rodney's land rover owner of the gorgeous little dog a few moments ago you saw in the video he's fully restored that himself and then there's derek's old rover p4 uh yeah that's obviously a bmw and then these lovely selection of minis a pickup and a minivan don't see many of them now depending on your age group these two might well be something you'd see more of being a, a modern a modern classic than a true classic Rover P6, who doesn't love a Rover P6? And then an MG. Now we come across this gorgeous Mini on a 4x4 frame. It's actually a Mini shell on a Suzuki 4x4 chassis. Known as Minuki. Been running around for years. I first saw this car many, many years ago when it was blue. And it is a true one of those go anywhere cars. And after that gorgeous Mini, look at this Mark 1 Ford Cortina Estate. How rare are they? Mark 2 Jaguar and this lovely Bristol. Now, I understand the owner of this one, when he got the car, it came in boxes and he's actually rebuilt that himself. Marvelous BMW 6 Series and then obviously the Volkswagen Camper there. Now, this then, this Morris Marina. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but it's actually hand painted by brush in black. It looks as though all the windows have been resealed by the owner by hand. And the signs in the window, although I didn't get a close shot of it on camera, the signs in the window say that the car has been on the road that long. I think it said it has, um, it's had five new engines and three replacement rear axles, or it could have been the other way around, but it's certainly seen some life. And what, what a truly wonderful car for still being on the road. And then we've got the lovely Ford Sierra sitting there. And then this fantastic army Jeep complete with trailer. Uh, what a wonderful thing that is. How complete that is. And obviously virtually totally original. Absolutely wonderful. What a lovely looking car that is. Moving on then. Uh, Mazda MX-5 Monza edition by the looks of it. And is this an Austin A30 or an A35? Never quite sure on those ones. Because uh, I wasn't at the back of it, so I didn't see the difference at the back for the tailgate or the boot lid. Another Land Rover, but you'd expect that in a country village show like this. 
And then obviously next to that is uh, the little goldish yellow Spitfire that we see in various places. And then we're back into a Morris Minor a Rover on that one. And look at this, this 50s Chevy Corvette. What an astounding car that is. Sounded beautiful on the way in as well. And you'll hear that on the way out when I get that on the way out there. And then there's the old uh, Ford convertible. The black MG Midget, uh, another local car. See that many times at Millie's Diner. And obviously the Triumph Toledo there. Lovely to see. Haven't seen one of those around for a long time. Now in the last of the lineup, we've got a lovely MG convertible. Subaru Impreza, owned by a friend of mine. Obviously my chariot of choice today. And uh, then we've got little Lotus Elan. Next to that, there's a group of, there's a pair of TRs, I should say. A group, there's a pair of TRs. And then this lovely, fairly recent Bentley convertible. What a wonderful thing that is. I'd hate to think what it takes to keep that interior clean though. Now hopefully you can hear me on this one. I didn't realise with service dogs, you know the dogs you say like police dogs and fire dogs and things like that. I didn't realise that service dogs, when they retire, have no aftercare given to them at all. So whilst they're in service for the fire brigade or the police, they get their, their welfare taken care of, they have like a care package. But once they retire, that ends. So there's none of that. So whoever ends up with a retired police dog or fire dog, they just have to go out and they have to pay for everything the dog needs with regards to its welfare as and when it happens. So one of the good things that I have found today is this. Now there's a charity being set up which is the Great North Service Dogs .org. So the Great North Service Dogs .org. If you want to go there and uh, see if you can donate anything to them, help with the dog's survival after they've retired. Now of course, as we always do at the end of the show, it's time to say goodbye to good friends and new friends. I'm going to head up to the gate and try and get some footage of some of the cars as they leave the event for, the, uh, for this afternoon. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, with a lot of cars having left the field, maybe it's time I head back to my car, get it packed up, ready to go home until the next one. So if you like what you've seen in this video and you've enjoyed it, caress the like button on the way out, consider subscribing to the channel. And as for now, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.